Hey, Cloud people, I'm back with another hands-on lab, and this time it's about Amazon Macy, a way to discover and protect your sensitive data at scale. I am a solution architect at AWS, but this is my personal channel, so any opinions or whatever that might come out in this channel uh, are my own. And I am going to be using content from workshops.aws. This is not content that I created, but as it says here, this is available and uh, without restriction. So you can go to this website and follow along for this hands-on workshop. I think the best way to learn AWS is just to experience some things. So if you go to workshops.aws, you can type in Macy and click on the first search result, which is data discovery and classification with Amazon Macy. If you want to jump ahead to a certain section of this workshop, you can uh, use the chapters in the description of this video. Otherwise, I'm going to go through every single part of this and um, hope it helps motivate you with your study. I tend to be a kind of a auditive learner, so I thought I'd make that for the other auditive learners out there who, who can benefit from a little talking along with um, their studying. So welcome to data discovery and classification with Amazon Macy. This workshop is designed to help you get familiar with Amazon Macy and learn how to scan and classify data in your S3 buckets. You will be working with Amazon Macy, data classification, and AWS Security Hub, centralized security view to view and understand how data in your environment is stored and to understand any changes in S3 bucket policies that may negatively affect your security posture. You will learn to create a custom data identifier and how to create and scope data discovery and classification jobs in Amazon Macy. Finally, you will use Amazon Macy to filter and investigate the results from the scans that you created. The level of this is intermediate. So I guess some things are assumed about your knowledge of AWS here. Uh, it takes about two hours to go through. CSF stands for Cyber Security Framework. And this workshop touches on the functions of protect, detect, and respond. CAF stands for the AWS Cloud Adoption Framework. OK, continuing. Prerequisites. You're going to need an AWS account, an admin IAM user, create S3 buckets, enable Macy, and enable Security Hub. So just be aware, some of these things are probably going to incur some cost in your account. So if you don't want to keep paying for this, make sure you turn it off after the uh, workshop is done. But some of this stuff is probably going to uh, be good to have uh, continually in your account for your security. But let's keep going. Introduction. This workshop is available in the following regions. I wonder why it's available in these two regions. I guess because the CloudFormation links, if you look at them, um, make it so you can click on it and it goes directly to the appropriate region. And this way they don't have like a ton of different links. Maybe there's another reason, but fine by me. I would think you can like uh, just do it in other regions as well. Um, you know, if you're doing this on your own, but this is just for workshop purposes that these are available just in those regions. Okay, anyway, enough speculation. Modules. This workshop is broken down into four modules. Setup, configure data discovery and classification, investigate and understand, review and discussion. Architecture. For this workshop, you will address the audit concerns using Amazon Macy. There are three buckets that we are focusing our efforts on today. Each bucket is named and tagged based on its classification level. The public bucket is not shared publicly, but contains information classified as public. Ah, that's good. Uh, so if you have any alerts in the accounts you're using this in that will go off if you have a bucket, bucket that's public, looks like that won't trigger those. Um, they're just classified as public. They're not actually public. OK, what do we have in this diagram? It looks like a bunch of S3 buckets. Demo bucket, public bucket, internal bucket, confidential bucket. I got it. That's what they meant by just classified. 
uh, we're naming it public bucket, but it's not going to be public. And then we've got Amazon Macy's, smack dab in the center. And we've got Macy classification jobs to classify the data in those three buckets. Oh, and we've got various levels of encryption. No encryption, SSE encryption, KMS encrypted, and encryption removed. Fascinating. And then we've got a third resource of Macy on here called Macy Bucket Policy Finding, and that is sent to AW Security Hub. And those results are also encrypted and stored in an S3 results bucket. I guess the fourth bucket, no, the fifth bucket on this architecture diagram. So there's the Macy Bucket Policy Finding and also the Macy Classification Finding. And both of those go to that S3 results bucket. And then looks like that also triggers an event via Amazon Event Bridge. So Event Bridge event. And that event will trigger a Lambda function, which does some remediation of those findings. I guess once it's done remediating, or once it starts, or both, there is an SNS topic that will trigger an email to be sent. Cool. Moving on to the scenario. Example Core has a data classification policy that requires that all documents, whether stored on premises or in the cloud, are tagged with a data classifier. Data owners are required to include a field, a string, or a tag in the file that reflects this. The cloud security engineering team has decided to use S3 bucket tags and object tags to help them manage the objects stored in S3, right? Because with S3, you've got buckets and the objects inside the buckets, and you can tag both of those. Buckets containing confidential documents should be encrypted with a customer-managed key. Internal buckets can use a service provider-managed key, but still need to be encrypted, and general public buckets can be left unencrypted. And uh, remember, this is this uh, example core's data policy. There is also a policy limiting cross-account sharing of S3 buckets. The compliance team has asked for an audit of S3. They want to make sure there are no publicly shared buckets, that no buckets have cross-account sharing enabled, and that the required buckets are encrypted with the correct level of encryption. They have also asked for verification that all data is tagged and is stored correctly, especially focusing on a new project that is just about to be made public. The project is called Project Unicorn, and data should be tagged as confidential since the project is not yet public. Setup and environment configuration. So this is where we start getting hands-on. In this first module, you will configure your environment you will enable Amazon Macy and AWS Security Hub and then run a CloudFormation template to create all the S3 buckets and populate them with data to scan. Final step will be to finish the configuration of Amazon Macy by completing the setup of an S3 bucket for storage of discovery results, like we saw in the, in the architecture diagram. So agenda is enable Amazon Macy, then Amazon Security Hub, run the CloudFormation template, configure Macy to export findings to an S3 bucket, and then optionally we can configure and create alerts for Macy job status messages. Okay, so we're gonna now enable Amazon Macy. Later, we will create data classification jobs to investigate the contents of your S3 buckets, and Macy will also do analysis of your S3 buckets and report on any configuration changes. Let's open up Amazon Macy. Okay, in the top right, I see the option to enable now. I think it's also possible to go to get started, but I'm just gonna click up here, enable now, and then I'm gonna hit the enable button, and it asks me, are you sure that you wanna enable automated sensitive data discovery for your account and all member accounts listed to your account? If you enable this feature, Macy starts to automatically select and inspect samples of your S3 objects for sensitive data on a continual basis. The scope of the analysis is subject to the monthly sensitive data discovery quotas for your organization's accounts 
and could affect the amount of data that your sensitive data discovery jobs analyze. Okay, so these quotas matter. It can take up to 48 hours for the results to appear in your S3 bucket inventory. Okay, so let's wait 48 hours right now. Okay, enable. I guess this is one of those services that you want to turn on before you need it because <laughs> you want to have these findings uh, available and not wait 48 hours when you need them. And when you enable Macy for the first time, your account is automatically enrolled in the 30 day free trial for Macy. Yay. To learn more, see Amazon Macy pricing. If you are using event engine, this does not apply. Um, that's if you're like in a reinvent workshop or whatever. Macy is now enabled and has begun to collect information about the S3 buckets in the account. Now let's enable AWS Security Hub. I love how easy some of these security services are. Like you just turn them on. <laughs> okay, let's go to Security Hub. Go to Security Hub. Let's see which standards it's going to tell us to enable. It says don't change the defaults. Just hit enable. Ignore the red banner indicating that AWS config is not enabled in the Security Hub console. It's not a requirement for this workshop. AWS Security Hub is now enabled and will begin collecting and aggregating findings from the security services we have enabled so far. Moving on to the third step out of five with the setup, run the initial CloudFormation template. We can just click on one of these regional options. So I'm going to click on Northern Virginia and next, 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 next. I'm going to put in an email address to get the SNS notification and then configure stack options. No, thank you. And then acknowledge that CloudFormation is going to create some IAM resources potentially. And back to the instructions. You're going to get an email from SNS asking you to confirm the subscription. And the email might take two to three minutes to arrive and might go to your spam or junk folder if it hasn't arrived by then. For now, I'm just going to click Next. Finish Macy Setup. Configure Amazon Macy to export findings to an S3 bucket. Now that the environment is set up, you need to complete the setup of Amazon Macy. When Amazon Macy runs a data discovery job, it creates a discovery result record for each Amazon S3 object that the job analyzes or attempts to analyze. This includes objects that don't contain sensitive data and therefore don't produce a finding, and objects that Macy isn't able to analyze due to issues such as permissions, errors, or use of an unsupported format. Yeah, if you put like a really weird uh, file format in there, how's Macy going to read that? Or I guess if Macy doesn't have the permissions to um, encrypt that object because you're using a, a KMS key for which you didn't give Macy permissions. So if an object does contain sensitive data, the record indicates where Macy found each occurrence of sensitive data in the object by line number for text files, by page number for PDF files, or the record number for Apache Avro object containers and Apache Parquet files. To access these records and enable long-term storage and retention of them, you can configure Macy to store the records in an S3 bucket and encrypt them using an AWS KMS key. If you do this, Macy starts writing your discovery results to JSON lines files. JSON lines is interesting if you've never seen it. It's like a, a JSON file, but with lots of JSON objects, just each on its separate line. If you do this, Macy starts writing your discovery results to JSON lines files, which it adds to the S3 bucket as GNU zip files or GZ files. Consequently, the S3 bucket can serve as a definitive long-term repository for all of your discovery results. If you don't configure this type of repository for your discovery results, Macy stores the results for 90 days. So technically you can use Macy without configuring an S3 bucket for the results, but then you're gonna lose any findings after 90 days, which you probably don't want to lose. Okay, so let's go to the Macy console. I'm going to refresh because I think I've already enabled that. Yep. I'll close the banner. 
and then I'll click on Discovery Results in the left-hand menu of Meetsy. Ah, there we go. And it looks like it was alerting me that it would be to, good to configure now a bucket. And we're going to choose an existing bucket. And it looks like my Macy Workshop setup CloudFormation stack failed. So that bucket isn't there. And the problem was resource of type AWS logs log group with identifier classification jobs already exists. Okay, so I'm going to remove that log group from the from the template. So I'm going to go to template and just going to copy all of that. And hopefully by the time you see this um, or soon after, this will be fixed in the workshop so that you don't have to do this. But um, here's what I'll do. I'll hit delete, delete stack, and then I will, with new resources, I'll go back to create template in designer. I'll hit template in the bottom left, YAML in the right. I'll paste in that template. Then I'm going to search for logs and I'm just going to comment out by doing command forward uh, dash um, on my MacBook. I'm going to comment that log group out because it looks, I imagine that was already created when I enabled Macy. Maybe when the workshop was written, Macy wasn't already creating that log group out of the box. Let's see, it's called AWS Macy Classification Jobs. Macy, yep, there it is. And it was created seven months ago. Ah, yeah, I guess I was playing with Macy seven months ago and this was already created. So I'm just gonna keep the log group commented out. I'm gonna click the checkbox to validate that my changes work. I'll click upload, the, the cloud upload icon, and then next. What am I gonna call this stack? I wanna give it the same name as before. I'm gonna open up the stacks menu and look at deleted stacks. And I'm gonna just copy the name used in the workshop just to stay consistent. I'm gonna type in my email again and next and Oh, by the way, I think this is a pretty cool option. I think it's kind of a recent addition to CloudFormation. This time I'm gonna preserve successfully provisioned resources because if everything successfully deploys except for like the log group, I want the successful resources to stay there and then I can just troubleshoot that one or two missing resources. Um, I really like this new feature of CloudFormation. So I'm gonna stick to that and next I acknowledge and submit. Okay, so I paused the video for a moment to let this finish creating, and this time it created successfully. So I'm gonna go back to the repository settings for Amazon Macy results, and I'm gonna hit the refresh button next to choose a bucket. And this time when I search for Macy workshop, I see there is a results bucket that I can choose. And then I'm gonna choose a KMS key and I'll use the Macy workshop results bucket encryption key and I'll choose the results bucket encryption key and then save. Success. Configure Amazon Macy to forward all findings to Security Hub. Go to Amazon Macy, click on settings in the left-hand menu. Here's settings, then publication of findings Oh, there it is, third from the top. Make sure the checkbox for publish policy findings to Security Hub is checked. And then the second box for publish sensitive data findings to Security Hub. So the first one was already checked for me and I'll now check the second one as well. And we'll keep the frequency default and we'll hit save. Woo, we've made it to the last step of the setup. And this will be to create alerts, or this will be to create job status alerts. And we'll start with creating alerts for Macy job status messages. As an Amazon Macy administrator, 
you need visibility into when a discovery job starts, stops, and most importantly, when there are errors. Amazon Macy publishes job status and health monitoring alerts to CloudWatch logs, providing monitoring and visibility into the operation of your sensitive data discovery jobs. This allows you to quickly identify, investigate, and address any errors. Yes, CloudWatch is my go-to for any troubleshooting in AWS, typically. A job status log message is created when a job is created, started, and when a job is complete. There are different messages for recurring jobs and one-time jobs. You will also receive a notification when a job is paused or resumed either by a user or due to a service quota exhaustion or renewal. Let's see what this link is about. Ah, it's a documentation on job status events. And here's an example of what an event looks like. Very cool. It is also vital to have visibility into the operational status of a job as it is running. Any premature interruption or termination of a job requires investigation. Macy now creates account level and bucket level error messages to enable you to understand why a job was terminated or stopped running. Hmm. I wonder uh, what the reasons for a job to start running are. Account level error messages. An account level error message informs you when there is a problem related to the account that owns the S3 buckets that were selected for scanning. These error messages include information such as the account ID affected, the job name, and description. A full breakdown of the account level error messages is available here. Let's take a look at that documentation. Oh, okay. So account access denied, account disabled, account disassociated, account isolated, account region disabled. The AWS account isn't active in the current AWS region. Account suspended, account terminated. Hmm. And then bucket level errors. So there are all these examples listed in the documentation. And that documentation includes the reason for the error and suggested remediation steps. Bucket level error messages. A bucket level error message informs you when Amazon Macy is unable to scan objects in the S3 bucket selected. These error messages include information such as the resource affected, job name, affected account, and most importantly, the operation attempted. By including information about the operation and resource affected, you are able to determine what S3 permissions might be needed, uh, might need to be modified to allow the Macy service account access to the S3 bucket for scanning operations. Got it. So oftentimes bucket le level errors have to do with S3 permissions. A full breakdown of the bucket level error messages is available here. I won't go there since we just looked at that. And again, it has the reasons and the suggested remediations. You will be using CloudWatch subscription filter to create and stream logs to a Lambda function, which will format and send the logs to an SNS topic to notify an administrator of the error condition. Yeah, I guess with the Lambda function, you can make it look nice and pretty and say, this is the error function, you know, maybe even have some conditional statements to give, um, you know, if this is the error here, the remediation steps right in the email message, that could be nice. In this section, you will be building an alert workflow for jobs that are paused due to user intervention or quota exhaustion. It is also possible to build alerts for other messages. These other message types will be shown as examples below. You will be using the SNS topic and a Lambda function created as part of the setup cloud formation for this exercise. This, ex this exercise uses a Lambda function created during the setup exercise to send an SNS message to your email with the captured log messages. The first step is to create a CloudWatch subscription filter. Follow these steps. Okay. And we're going to select log groups. And 
This is the law group that was already created before I started this in my case, but uh, if it wasn't the case for you, then the CloudFormation stack would have created this law group for you. And we're gonna check the box next to that law group's name. I'll just type in Macy and ah, there it is, the second one. I checked the box and I'm gonna to go to action, subscription filters and create Lambda subscription filter. Okay, action, subscription filters and Lambda. There's also Kinesis Firehose, Kinesis and OpenSearch. Okay, and then we're gonna choose the Macy Workshop Lambda. So I'll type in Macy and which one of the Macy? It'll be the message Lambda function. So that's the third one on the list there. We're gonna select JSON as the log format and we can just paste in this filter expression for the subscription filter pattern. So JSON subscription filter pattern, paste and we'll give the filter a name. Oh, and it gives us some other useful filters such as account bucket, bucket access denied, or bucket does not exist, or bucket in different region, or bucket owner change. This will capture all bucket level events that are interesting and should be captured as these events represent error conditions. Okay, I'm gonna give the name Macy job paused as suggested. Ah oh, yeah, because event type equals job paused by Macy service quota met. And then we're gonna click start streaming. Oh, this is cool. We can also test the pattern. I don't think that will necessarily work because these are not Macy messages, so I don't think anything will match. Yeah, probably we could um, use some of the examples from the documentation, but I trust that these instructions are right and that it will work. All right, we have finished the setup for our Amazon Macy workshop labs, and now we'll configure data discovery and classification. So in this Second module will create a custom data identifier and two data classification jobs. So it's four steps here. Create a custom data identifier to discover project data, 20 minutes. Create a CloudWatch event rule for remediation, 10 minutes. Create a classification job to scan all buckets daily, 10 minutes. And four, create a classification job with some exclusions and using the custom data identifier another 10 minutes. Let's we'll see if we can do it even faster. Macy and KMS encryption keys. In order for Amazon Macy to correctly scan an object in your S3 bucket that is encrypted with a customer managed KMS key, the Macy service role needs to be given permission to use the key. That's always the thing to watch out for when you're using customer managed keys in KMS. Make sure whatever is using those keys has the permission for that key. The confidential bucket in the workshop is encrypted with a KMS key and the correct permissions have been assigned to the key to provide you with an example. Oh, that's great. We have an example. And you can read the documentation for Macy for supported encryption types for more information. So here we have all the encryption options. I bet external KMS keys are supported now too. That's a new release with KMS this past reInvent. And they said it's supposed to work out of the box with most services, including Amazon S3. Something to look into. And let's view the permissions for the KMS keys in the workshop in the KMS console. So let's see if the CloudFormation stack we deployed already put it um, there. Yep, here we have the Macy encryption key and another one. So we have the results bucket encryption key and the confidential bucket encryption key. And we can look at the confidential bucket encryption key permissions by clicking on that and scrolling down to look at the key policy. Uh, so we have the permissions for root, 
uh, which is helpful so that there's a way to access the key if you know all else is um, not able to access it. And then allowing the service role uh, for Macy to use the key. And that's only the permissions it needs, like decrypting and encrypting, basically. The JSON policy that has been applied to the CMK KMS key is shown below for your information. Um, well, most of it. They're not showing the root part I mentioned before. Um, but yeah, this is the interesting part because this is the part that affects how Macy can use the CMK. The account number will be the account number of the account you are using. All right, so let's go next. Create a custom identifier. We are going to create a data classification job that will look for any files that contain the words project and unicorn. That's cool. These would indicate that the file contains sensitive information pertaining to our secret project. To do this, we need to create a custom data identifier. Right, because uh, you know how does the service Amazon Macy know out of the box that you have a project that can be identified by the fact that it contains the words project and unicorn. Uh, that is definitely custom. To do this, we need to create a custom data identifier and you can follow along with the instructions or attempt to create the regex expression yourself, regular expression. By the way, if you don't know this website, this is the best website that I know of for testing regular expressions. I won't go through a demo of it now, but check it out. It's really helpful for me. So one, go to the custom data identifier page in the Amazon Macy console. So I'll just click on that link. Hopefully it takes us right there. And it sure does. And we'll click the create button to begin the process of creating our custom data identifier. And if we have some already, it would show us here. Let's give it a name, project unicorn, a description, find all the confidential project unicorn data. And now we'll need to create a regex to create, describe the string we wish to match. Your regex should be able to match any combination of upper and lower case for the word unicorn. You can test your regular expression using the evaluate panel. Oh, cool. You don't even need to use that external tool. The regex solution is shown after step four. So we wanted to match all of these examples, these test cases. So I wonder where that, ah, uh, yeah, here. So here's the evaluation thing. And uh, if we put in a regular expression, let's just put something basic for now, which should not meet all these cases, only the third one here. Yep, it only has one match now, but we want it to match all four of these. So I think to make it not case sensitive, there is a flag at the end we can add, flags case insensitive which is I. I wonder if Macy supports that. If we hit test, zero matches. So I wonder how it likes us to do case insensitive. So I'll just look at the solution. Ah, oh, okay, so the I goes in front of the word, not with a dash. So that's good to know. And now we'll evaluate. Great. So that was helpful to use that evaluation tool. And and then a keyword here will be project. So what's the difference between regex and keyword? Um, project. So Macy includes a result for text that contains any of these keywords if the result matches the regex pattern and is within distance of one of these words. Interesting. I wonder like what distance it sounds like if it matches the regular expression and is close to the word project, it, seem, it seems like that's what it's saying. Oh, here, we can set the distance and the default is 50 characters, I suppose, 50 characters or words. I guess we could test this out. Um, Right, now it's not showing any results because we don't have the word project anywhere. So now if we put this in here, 
This time it will result in something. But now I want to play with the concept of distance and just put some random characters in between and reduce the distance from 50 to like three. Just to see if this is referring to characters like I think it is. So test, yep, zero. And now if I change it to like 10, that looks like 10 characters. Oh, now let's change it to 15. Okay, so that's still not close enough distance. Um, I should just count this, but I don't feel like it. Okay, so 25 is enough. I wonder why 25. Uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 15 didn't work. So it might be counting from the start of the position of the word, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, which is between 15 and 25. So I'll go with that. Um, but that's cool that you've got that level of configurability. Uh, I'll just go back to the default. Oh, I'll do it suggest 30. So I'll just go with the instructions here. And then we'll hit submit. And success. And now we will create an event bridge rule for remediation. You have just created a custom data identifier. Now we need to create an event bridge rule that will automatically remediate any findings created when we use the custom data identifier to find data that is incorrectly tagged and stored. For now, we are just creating the event bridge rule. We will shortly create the data discovery job. Okay. Event bridge is a serverless event bus that makes it easy to connect applications together using data from your own applications. SaaS applications that are integrated and AWS services. And there's a landing page for EventBridge to learn more about it, but we'll just go straight to the console here and we'll create a rule with an event bridge and we'll give it this name, the remediation rule, and we'll trigger a Lambda function and then yep it does look like this so we will click next and just go with the other defaults there and then we can have it match this pattern so we're going to enter our own and it looks like what this means is that um, if the source of an event is from the service macy and the type of event is that a custom identifier was detected of type sensitive data, then it will trigger this event. And it says this is valid, so that's good news. And we'll click next to continue. So what's the difference, by the way, between this box and this box? And that's a sem sample event. Oh, so maybe I was supposed to enter it down here. I think, yeah, let's see, event pattern. Yeah, I'm supposed to enter it down here. That was just to give a sample event that I can test against the event pattern. Um, but we'll skip that because this has surely been tested already um, and vetted since it's in the workshop. Anyway, under select target, select Lambda function. So target type, I'll just type this so I don't have to scroll through the list. And looks like that Lambda function was deployed by the CloudFormation template. I will narrow this down by Macy. Actually, I'll just paste it in from what I copied in the instructions. And then we can Click next and next and create rule. Okay, so next and next, create rule. Done, ta-da. I think that took us quicker than it said in the chapter, uh, table of contents. Now we will review the Lambda function to see what it does. 
So we'll open up the Lambda console and I'll just filter by remediation Lambda function. I'll click on that and let's look at the code here. Uh, this code was also included in the CloudFormation template and uh, 65 lines of Python looks like. And what do we have here? Uh, we have the bucket ARN and uh, you know, which tag name do we want to use uh, to tag things? And what are the actual object? Um, okay, so it creates all these strings here, all these messages. And okay, so here are the actual actions. It copies something from S3, deletes something from S3, and tag something in S3. And then, oh, moves the thing that it copied um, to the secure bucket and then finishes uploading it to that secure bucket. I, I am guessing that's what it is doing, just reading through it for the first time. Um, let's see what the instructions say about it. Create the first data classification job. Now we are going to create a data classification job so we can evaluate the contents of our S3 buckets. The first job we create will run once a day and evaluate the complete contents of our S3 buckets to make sure we have correctly tagged and classified all our data. This job will use only the managed identifiers available with Amazon Macy. The complete list of managed identifiers is available here. I think we looked at this already. Oh, there's a whole little talk on this on YouTube. Oh, okay, yeah, so it'll be able to automatically detect things like AWS credentials, open SSH private keys, um, and bank account numbers from the countries listed here, credit card expiration dates. So there are all these types of, um, all these data types that are managed by AWS which is super cool. Even stuff like national drug code. So I'm gonna close up some of these windows because we keep opening up new windows. And then I'm gonna open up the Macy console again and we'll select S3 buckets on the left. And we'll select the three S3 buckets li listed here public, internal, and confidential. I'm gonna to switch to the list view. So public. So I think I have a different view here because I was experimenting with Macy in the past. So let's see, I'm gonna, oh, here. I can expand the bucket column. I'll close the menu on the left. Okay, so here we have we want public, internal, and confidential. So public, internal, and confidential. And then we'll create a job. And it's uh, letting us know that there will be a charge for this. So please watch out for that and, and read about the pricing and whatever you are now able to verify the S3 buckets you chose before you continue. Use the previous or remove buttons if you select the incorrect S3 buckets. Click on next to continue. You will now scope your job. Create your job with the following parameters or scope. So we're gonna go with a scheduled job selected, update frequency daily, include existing objects selected, scheduled job selected, including the listing job selected daily. Okay, so those are all the defaults so far. Sampling depth 100 and the other is defaults. Okay, well, those are already are the defaults. And then next to continue. And looks like we're gonna go with all managed identifiers. And we're also going to add, oh, we're not, 
going to include any custom identifiers in this one. I guess that'll be on the next job. And we'll give the job a name. And a description. So I guess for all the buckets, we're using the AWS managed ones. And I assume after this, we're going to do just one bucket for the custom identifier. We shall see. So let's click on next to continue and we'll hit submit. And then hopefully we'll get a green banner. Yep, and it was successfully created. Moving on, create the second data classification job. Now you are going to create the second data classification job so you can evaluate the contents of your S3 buckets. This second job you create will run once and evaluate the contents of the internal and public tag buckets looking for project unicorn data. This job will use a custom data identifier. So we'll head to back to, Ma, to Macy. We'll go back to S3 buckets. This is familiar now because we did this in the last data classification job. This time we'll only select public and internal. So I'll switch to list view again and I'll scroll down. I'll expand the bucket name column and I'll select public and internal and create job. And yes, those are the correct buckets. And I'll click next. And I'm guessing we'll stick with those defaults again one time. Oh no, well, we're going to do a one time job this time. And sampling depth of 100% will include tags with keys of classification and value of internal. Okay. So tags, add new tag, key classification, value internal, include tags with key of classification and value of public. So I guess these are tags on S3 bucket objects. Like scan the objects if they have these tags is what it seems like. Include all managed data identifiers. Uh, I think we need to click next before we do that. Oh, uh, do we need to click include as the third step? Seems like it. Let's click include. Ah, okay. And now it made it to the right here. That's cool. Okay. And I think the managed data identifiers and custom those are on the next step. So I'm going to click next and yes, I will include all managed data identifiers and I'm not sure why we're including those. Cause I thought we included them in the last one, mm, but maybe I'm forgetting now. Maybe we didn't scan these buckets or at least not all of these, or both of these two buckets we're doing now. Specify the custom data classifier. Okay, select and next. Give the job a name and description. So this time it'll be project data and description scan public and internal buckets for secret project data using a custom identifier. And I guess we'll click next, 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 next and submit. And that was successful. Well done. You can now create a custom data identifier and create different types of data classification jobs. Yes, we have those skills now. So that's awesome. So we made it through the setup and configure data discovery and classification steps. And next up will be the investigate, understand and remediate steps. So I'm going to take a break here and pick it up after a pause. All right, we have finished the setup, the configure data discovery and classification, and now we're going to investigate, understand, and remediate. And in this third module, we will be spending time reviewing the results from the two scans we created, and we'll also look at the alerts that have been forwarded to Security Hub. And we'll review the findings generated by the two jobs created in module two, and using the filter capability 
we'll learn some of what the findings can tell us about the data in our environments. So the agenda is one, review and understand the S3 bucket inventory panel in Amazon Macy. We'll review the alerts in Security Hub, review the results from the first job created in module two, and we'll review the results from the second job we created. All right, review S3 bucket inventory. This shows you a summary of the S3 inventory in your environment. This panel provides you with a view of the total number of buckets, total number of objects, and total S3 storage consumed. Also provided is a breakdown of buckets by those that are shared publicly or not, those that are encrypted or not, and those that are shared inside and outside your account and or organization. Return to the Macy summary page. All right. So we're on the Macy summary page and we'll take a minute to review the panel. All right, I set up a split view so I can see the instructions and the console at the same time. We can compare the panel in the image below. Oh, am I in the correct region? Let's see, maybe I should be in Virginia. That looks more like it. Yep, there are the Macy workshop setup buckets and we can compare the panel uh, in the image here with the one on our summary. So we've got public access, encryption and sharing. Yep, we've got public access and 100% is not publicly accessible. So that's great. Encryption, we've got 100% of my buckets are not inquiring, requiring encryption in terms of what the bucket policy has defined. And 45% of them have the default encryption disabled. Pretty bad. And it looks uh, pretty similar here in the screenshot. And then sharing, none of the buckets are shared, so we don't need to worry about that. Well, so that's a nice quick way to check those deets on S3 buckets. Let's go next. And then we can go to Security Hub and review the alerts that were forwarded by Macy. And Macy generates policy findings when the policies or settings for an S3 bucket are changed in any way that reduces the security of the bucket and its objects. So I guess it's a finding if something is changed from not to public to public, I would, I would guess. These policy findings are forwarded to Security Hub. In AWS Security Hub, you can review the findings, create a custom insight, or take action using automation workflows. The full list of policy findings can be found here in the documentation. Okay, very cool. A lot of, a handful of findings. And one of them is like, disabling the default encryption on a bucket. Okay, so we will open up the Security Hub console and I'll close those messages and latest findings from AWS integrations. Let's see if we have that panel. There we are. And we've got Guard Duty, Inspector, Macy, AWS Health, IAM Access Analyzer, SSM Patch Manager, and Firewall Manager. And yes, Macy seems to be sending things since there are findings from five hours ago. And we'll click See Findings next to Macy to see what we can see. And we should, I'll close the menu here. And yeah, it detected that this bucket contains personal information. And there are filters here that we can use to uh, drill down to a certain type of finding and we can click on block public access settings are disabled for the S3 link under the title column. Okay. Let me just do a find on that. Nope. I guess it's mostly this one finding showing up right now. So I'll try using a filter to see if I can get that title. Title is and then I'm going to paste in that finding and apply. Yes, one did show up. And I will click on this title now. 
and we can see the details panel on that finding. And it gives us more information, such as access to the bucket is controlled only by ACLs or bucket policies, uh, meaning the block public access settings, which is an additional control, are not being used, I guess, on that bucket. Okay, and it shows us exactly which resource has this issue. And then we can look at the second type of alert. Encryption is disabled for the S3 bucket. I will close the details panel, remove the title filter, and add a different title filter where the title is encryption disabled. There it is. And that's a low alert compared to the critical alert that public access settings aren't being used. So next, investigate the results from the scan all buckets job. Amazon Macy produces findings. Interpreting the findings is how you develop an understanding into how your data is stored in your environment. Investigate the results from the scan all buckets job. Amazon Macy produces findings. Interpreting the findings is how you develop an understanding into how your data is stored in your environment. For this job, you configured your scan to use only the included managed data identifiers. In this section, you will use the findings menu option to view and filter the findings that were created by the two jobs you configured in module two. We will investigate some of the filter types and methods for applying them. So let's look at the jobs menu. So I'll go back to Macy, open up the menu and go to jobs. And then the first one we created was called Macy Workshop Scan All Buckets. Let me expand the job name column. There it is. And yeah, alphabetically, it's the second one. And there's a show results button here. And we'll click on the first option, show findings. And here's a screen of all the findings from that particular job. And we can filter by finding type, finding type. And as a fi finding type, we can choose sensitive data S3 object credentials. And there it is, the third option on that dropdown. And click apply. And there are those results. And then we can scroll down and select the S3 object tag key and enter the value of classification. Okay, I think by scrolling down, they mean let's just add another filter and we'll choose S3 object key and we'll enter the value classification, which is a, oh, nothing came up. Did I type it wrong? Classification, doesn't look wrong, but let me just paste it instead just to be sure. S3 object tag key. Maybe I did value by accident, let's see. Equals classification, apply. Okay, that worked. And then let's add another filter and this will do tag value, object tag value equals, and I will paste it in just in case, apply. Okay, so we've added S3 object tag key equals classification and now we will add a third filter for S3 object tag value equals, I'll paste that in just to be safe, equals public. And we've drilled down to just these six findings. And that's a list of files. We've got just six files now that contain credentials and are tagged as public. And we can click on one of these findings and get a details pane, which shows us all the details about that file and we can see which part of that file resulted in the finding. We can see what S3 bucket the file is stored in. Is the file in the correct S3 bucket? Okay, what's the name of this bucket? It is the public bucket. However, the file name is, okay, I'm not getting much out of the file name, but um, here there's, oh, I've disabled the ability to see sensitive data samples. And now I'm gonna enable that feature. I'm gonna choose the KMS key. Let's use the confidential bucket encryption key. Let's see if that works. 
And then let's try that again. Okay, let's refresh the page. I'm going away from the instructions for a second because I'm just curious about this capability to review samples. Aha, uh -huh. so it found a putty private key. And we can have it even reveal the sample, although that had to be enabled specifically. Uh, so if that is not a secure option for you, you can have that disabled. Oh, here it is. Okay. So the sample is, is the third column and it says putty user key file to SSH RSA encryption and blah, 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 I guess. Now, if I make it small, I can see more of it. Yeah, that looks like an RSA or putty key, I guess. Long complicated string. Okay, well that's cool that you can drill down so far and actually see what the issue is. Um, so yeah, that file probably isn't stored in the correct S3 bucket since this bucket is called, oh, that's the result location. And then it was found in the public bucket. Yeah, so that's probably not the correct S3 bucket. Are there files tagged as public stored in the incorrect buckets? Are there files tagged as public? Oh yeah, I guess this file that had the putty information, the putty key information, that was tagged with um, public. So that is also wrong. It was in the wrong bucket and it was given the wrong object tag. When you create a filter, it can be an include filter or an exclude filter. The default is an include filter. By clicking on the black circle next to the filter type, you can change this. Okay. Ah, oh, okay. So when it's like an empty circle with a cross, uh, with a cross through it, then we're excluding that job. And now we're including that job. And include filters are the same as equals and exclude filters are the same as not equals. All right, and now let's see. Our next filter will show us which files contain US social security numbers and if any of them are located in public buckets. And now we can clear all of the filters by clicking the giant X. And, oh, I could have, um, oh, and I guess it's also an option to save a rule so that we don't need to build out a combination of five filters every time if that's something we do often. Okay, let's add a filter for a sensitive uh, data detection type. And we'll do USA social security number and apply. Our example organization uses bucket tags to identify which buckets can be public. So let's use that as our next filter criteria. Right, we're trying to see if a public bucket has social security numbers in it. And since we know that if a bucket is tagged public, it is public, we will search by bucket tag key. And we'll do equals classification, apply, and then S3 bucket tag value. I think these tags were um, given as part of the CloudFormation specs. Okay, apply. Oh, and then we're gonna change um, just, to, I guess, to practice, like the inverse filtering. I'm looking for that um, not equals thing, but I'm not seeing it. Let's let's click out of that again and do S3 bucket tag value and change it to not equals. There it is. And because I was looking for this this thing, um, I guess that's in a different view. I forget how to get to that. But we got it. Uh, you just change it to not equals and then confidential, apply. And whoa, look at all those fake social security numbers from our fake data set uh, that are in these non-confidential buckets. Yeah, can you find out which files contain credit card numbers? Which buckets are those files stored in? And are any of those files even encrypt, um, even unencrypted? So let's click on one of them. Look at the details pane. Okay, so the bucket we have, the bucket name is in the resource field of the overview. 
that also contains the file name which is sample data dash blah 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 kind of dot csv and is it encrypted let's see oh and it has 30 credit card numbers in that one file and 30 social security numbers in that one file and it is using the default encryption of aes256 i wonder if we could add another filter for seeing if the default encryption is not on s3 bucket default encryption none apply okay so yeah there is one where not only does it have 30 credit card numbers 30 social security numbers but the encryption also seems to be off so that's that was really quick to figure that out thanks to the filters an additional method to create a filter is to use the right hand details panel oh next to each of the details in the panel is a magnifying clap glass with a plus button that creates an include or equals filter and a magnifying glass with a minus button that in, that creates an exclude or not equals filter that's really cool so let's try one of them out let's see probably if we include severity high it'll have all the same because credit card you know that's an issue but that's cool how that showed up right away over here and then if we um say don't include resources in US East 1, probably everything will go away because so far I've only been working in that region. Yep, it went away. And now if I switch that to include by clicking the button next to the filter, it all comes back because everything is included in that region. Okay, next. Okay, we're in the last section before we get to the review. Investigate the results from the project data discovery job. You have learned how to create filters, both exclude and include, and how to use the finding details panel. For this job, you included a custom data identifier. In this section, you will gather some information about the files stored with Project Unicorn data in them, as well as look at the remediation actions taken by the CloudWatch event and Lambda function you configured in an earlier module. Amazon Macy will produce findings for all managed data identifiers. To reduce the number of results, you create a suppression rule. After you create a suppression rule, Macy will continue to generate findings that meet the criteria. However, Macy archives the findings automatically and stops publishing the findings as Amazon CloudWatch events. Uh, what? Okay. So to make sure you don't get overwhelmed by all the findings, you can create a suppression rule and Macy will continue uh, creating the findings, but it'll immediately archive those findings and not publish them to CloudWatch logs if there's a suppression rule. And to better understand that, let's create the following. Which buckets contain files with Project Unicorn data in them? And we can use a custom ID in the filter. Okay, let us cancel out of all the filters we had and do a custom identifier filter. What would that be? Identifier? Or would that be a tag? I think that would be a tag. Object tag key equals project unicorn. I'm forgetting now. The custom identifier ID. Okay, let's Go to back to Macy and see if there's a list of custom, ah, there, settings, custom data identifiers, close this. I'm going to click on the one we created. Ah, and there actually is an ID for custom data identifiers, and there it is. So I'll go back to the findings page and create a filter for identifier, custom data identifier detection, ARN. Okay, so is there like a complete ARN here? I mean, this does not look like an ARN. Hmm. Let's see what happens if we just enter this ID here. Apply. Okay, I guess that works. So if we click on one of them, we get things from Project Unicorn. And those are in the internal bucket from the workshop. 
and then review the actions of the CloudWatch event and Lambda remediation functions. Okay, let's see what the actions are in the details pane. Are there any actions? Maybe in the job ID? Let's see what the workshop instructions say. The Lambda remediation function was written to take action when triggered by a CloudWatch event related to any findings which were created by the custom data identifier you created. The function will move the file to a location with the correct security settings and then delete the file, I guess the original file. It will leave a stub file with the same name as the original, but with a message to the user. Oh, that's cool. So if someone's looking for that file and doesn't find it in the original location, they know what's up. The Lambda function will also apply the correct data classification tag to the file and send an email to the address provided in the CloudFormation template in module one. To see the message left for the user in the stub file, you can follow these steps. Click on the finding from step one above and look at the overview section. Okay. And find the resource. Okay. So we'll click on the resource. It'll take us directly to the location within S3. Let's click download on that file and we can open that up in our favorite text editor. Okay. And I open up that text file and I see that the file was moved to the confidential bucket out of the internal bucket and it gives the exact location. Awesome. Very cool. If all project unicorn data should be confidential, which files are not correctly tagged? Okay. So I guess we can go back to our findings page. We already have a filter for the a custom identifier, and now we can see which ones are not tagged confidential. So that would be object key, I guess. And it would be classification, I, I think I remember. Oops, nope. Let's just go directly to the value. And let's say uh, confidential apply. I did spell confidential correctly. So let's change it to not equals because that's what we're looking for. I believe object tag value does not equal confidential. So all four of these have that issue. Let's see if the workshop had the same solution. Object tag value confidential. Yep. And because that's a crossed out empty circle, we know they chose not equals like we did. And classification was the object tag key. And now we'll create a suppression rule to surface incorrectly tagged objects and hide all correctly tagged and stored project data. Okay. So we'll create a filter to include all the findings of interest and we'll click on suppress findings to begin creating a suppression rule. Okay. So let's just uh, do exactly what it has here and add S3 object tag key equals classification tag key. Let's see if I can get it to work this time equals class, uh, oh, the case matters, classification, apply, yes. And we can click on suppress findings and we can give it a name, suppress and save. And this is to ignore correctly tagged and stored objects. You're now able to create include or equals and exclude or not equals filters and apply filters to Amazon Macy findings. You can also create and apply a suppression rule to filter out results. I'm confused though about why we're um, suppressing this. So these are all the findings for objects within Project Unicorn where they are not tagged confidential. Isn't that stuff we would want to know as opposed to stuff we want to filter out that we want to suppress? Put it in the comments below if you understand why we would want to filter that out. I have to think about that one. Time for me to have lunch, I think. <laughs> That's a lot of um, Macy to go through. And okay, we are at the end review. The fourth module is all about understanding what happened, asking questions, and doing the cleanup to avoid charges to your AWS account, if applicable. So we address data classification and financial audit concerns using the architecture described in the diagram below. Yep. 
And now we're able to enable Macy, create Macy data classification jobs, create a custom data identifier, create a CloudWatch event triggered from a Macy finding to fire a Lambda function, understand and navigate Macy findings. And the last thing we just did, create a suppression rule to help tune Macy findings. I guess it's easy enough, um, even if I didn't understand why we're doing this particular suppression, I understand how to do suppress findings and I'll know what to do if I'm starting to get too many alerts in CloudWatch. I can go to create a few filters and click suppress findings. So that's good to know. You were able to easily answer questions about the data, such as did any files contain PII, SSN, and which did not? and which files had references to our confidential project and which had uh, credit card numbers and where were those files stored in, like which buckets and were any of those files encrypted or unencrypted? Yep, I guess it can help us answer a lot of questions. Okay, so to clean up and to avoid charges, we can follow these instructions. So first we can delete all of these five S3 buckets and the key to deleting S3 buckets is to empty them first. So let's head over to S3 and I'm just gonna filter by Macy and I'll click one at a time, empty. Oh, and I need to then write the word permanently empty and that was a success. And okay, I'll click exit and then Search for Macy again, and this time I'll click on the second one. And oops, I didn't have to click into it. Filter Macy, select the second one, hit empty, and permanently delete. And it was a success and exit. Okay, three more to go. And empty and exit. Two more to go. Empty. Permanently delete, exit, one more to go. It's just five, no need to create a script for this, but I am I guess you can script this. Oh, this one was already empty. Okay, so let's just try um, going through these buckets again, called Macy, and actually hitting delete this time. And we'll need to copy paste the name of the bucket for it to let us do that. You know, I don't think we need to manually delete these because they were created with the CloudFormation template. And now that we emptied them, the CloudFormation should delete those. So let's just try that first. And if it didn't work, we can always go back and manually delete them. Solomon, please hide that account number. Okay, so there's a Macy Workshop Env Setup CloudFormation stack. And I'll just hit Delete Stack. And while that's going, I'll go back to Macy and go to settings. And let's see if I can disable Macy. Okay, disable, disable. Okay, and then let's go to Security Hub and disable that. Um, oh, I guess it's open here. And settings and general and disable AWS Security Hub. And let's go back to CloudFormation and refresh. Delete is still in progress. Let's see where it's at. It deleted the Lambda, some roles. It did start deleting these buckets, so that's working. Let's take a look at S3 to see if there's any Macy buckets left at this point. Macy, no. They were all successfully deleted by CloudFormation. Good thing I skipped the step of manually deleting them, but it was necessarily to empty them first. CloudFormation will not let you um, delete it with the CloudFormation automation otherwise. Awesome, you guys, you made it to the end. Congratulations. Please, if this was helpful, like and subscribe and leave a comment below on what you learned because uh, if you write down what you learned, that helps you remember it better. And that's why I'm making these videos for me to remember it better by sharing it with you as I go. And, you know, I'll have to hear it again a bit as I uh, review the video uh, before publishing it. And yeah, thanks. Until next time.